so much for being here. <laughs> I would like to start uh, my presentation about the promising role of neutrophil CD64 as an early diagnostic and prognostic marker in neonatal sepsis. We're back again to the sepsis subject, but we are going to specify uh, its role in the neonates. Uh, as its name implies, it is uh, the sepsis that occurs in the first four weeks of life, and as we all know and presented before, it's part of the systemic inflammatory response syndrome, including for information all suspected sepsis, which may develop into severe sepsis or septic shock ending in death. Uh, neonatal sepsis represents the most common cause of neonatal morbidity and mortality in the early human life. Uh, the WHO has estimated that about one million deaths per year is due to neonatal sepsis. And uh, about 42% of these deaths occurs in the first week of life. So we have very short time. 99% of these deaths occur in the developing countries. This is the figure uh, proposed by the WHO showing that sepsis is about 26% of the cause of death in neonates. However, the rates in, uh, vary from one region to another, being higher in Africa and uh, Asia and developing countries such as ours, uh, rising up to 40% and lowest, of course, in the United States and Austria, uh, being 1.5 to 3.5 neonatal deaths per 1,000 live births. Uh, not only, uh, as uh, this figure proves, not only uh, death is the, uh, is the problem, but we also have a very uh, high morbidity among the survivors, including neurodevelopmental diseases, deafness, blindness, and renal failure. So, from all the mentioned data, it is evident that the early diagnosis, follow-up, and proper treatment of sepsis not only increase the survivor rate, but also improves the prognosis among the survivors. Here we come to the problem, uh, how to diagnose neonatal sepsis. We have clinical data, which are uh, vague, be be being shared with respiratory and uh, neuro and uh, renal metabolic changes, and the laboratory and radiological methods used for diagnosis, which are very vast and including many, many uh, tests that could be done. Uh, here I will stress on the laboratory diagnosis of neonatal sepsis. To summarize, it is, uh, we put it in three categories. First, the isolation of the microorganisms. Second is the hematological studies, uh, including the study of acute phase reactants. And third is the new marker of sepsis or the molecular diagnostic techniques, which I will not be discussing in this um, presentation. Of course, the blood and the bacterial cultures are the gold standard. However, they, are, um, they have many disadvantages, including long turnaround time, uh, up to seven days, many false positive and false negative due to uh, innate parameters. The CD CBC parameters itself are a good follow-up markers. However, they are late diagnostic, so they don't serve us in the critical period. They take, uh, in addition, they are not gene specific and they vary with many pathological conditions and even with age. However, there remains one marker that's very specific is the immature to the total leukocytic count that can be helpful in the early diagnosis of sepsis in the neonates. The CRT, as we all know, is the most researchable marker since 1930. And uh, however, it may have many disadvantages of low sensitivity, low specificity, but now we use the high sensitive CRT in our uh, uh, hospital as it increased uh, the sensitivity to more than 20 times the regular technique. So, to diagnose, we have to use the conventional methods. We cannot neglect them. The new biomarkers, which we are going to talk about in order to reach a rapid and accurate diagnosis for sepsis. Uh, there are many uh, markers uh, that has been researched. However, we selected a few markers to discuss that showed very promising markers. On top of them is our neutrophil CD64, which uh, we are going to discuss today, the neutrophil CD11B, monocyte CD14, monocyte CD153, procalcitonin, percepsin, interleukin 6 and 8, and proadrenaline. The neutrophil CD64, when we come to uh, uh, know what it is, it is an FC receptor uh, gamma 1. On um, top of uh, neutrophils, and it helps in the immune uh, mechanism to regulate and to um, help opsonization and engulfing the pathogens. So in this study, we aim to answer four questions. The first, 
was to evaluate the diagnostic performance of neutrophil CD64 as an early diagnostic marker for sepsis. The second was to compare between its value and its levels and the conventional modalities used in our hospitals. The third was to identify the panel of marker which we can use among the conventional and the new biomarkers and also the final questions that we needed to ask was does it have a prognostic value uh, in follow-up and can, can it be used in follow-up? This study was conducted earlier this year and the late 19, uh, uh, last year and included 175 evaluation conducted on 121 newborns. 54 of these were follow-up evaluations. We couldn't follow up all the babies because we had uh, mortalities, uh, uh, trans transformation from one department to another. So these are the follow-ups that we could use. We divided our patient into three main categories. Group 1A, which is the proven sepsis, including 17 patients. They have proven uh, uh, blood culture positive for sepsis. Group 2B, 1B, uh, these are the suspected patient group, including 74 patients. They are neonates with clinical symptoms and signs of sepsis in whom bacterial culture results were not yet available. And the group uh, 2 was the control group of 30 patients which were healthy age ma and sex matched neonates. The criteria of sepsis were uh, included according to the clinical guidelines. They have to include respiratory, cardiovascular, and metabolic changes. All our subjects were subjected to a complete dot picture uh, and the IT <coughs> ratio was uh, done for 50 patients to evaluate its value. Uh, blood culture, uh, CRT levels by highly sensitive technique, flow cytometric evaluation of CD64. And I want to talk about the flow cytometric technique. I will spare you the laboratory detail because most of you are not uh, laboratorian as I am. Uh, it's a very uh, easy technique once you have the machine, especially for the CD64. It utilizes um, whole blood, uh, doesn't need separation. It utilizes only 100 micron, which is very minimal blood. This is important for the innate because harvesting blood samples are very uh, crucial problem. When we come to uh, our results, uh, first the comparative statistics as regards the demographic data, all our uh, candidates were matched for um, age and weight. Uh, however, there was significant dis uh, difference between the symptoms between the control group and the sepsis group, group one and A and B, in rega as regards respiratory distress, respiratory support, uh, undergoing surgery and congenital anomaly in death. When we came to evaluate all our data, including uh, CBC data, CRT and CD64, we have two parameters uh, given to us by the machine, the CD64 percent and the CD64 intensity. Uh, they were all highly sensitive except for the pla platelets and the hemoglobin total leukocytic cell. The performance of CD64 alone as an early marker, we found that it has a specificity over 90%, sensitivity over 85%, with a total efficiency 87%, which was very promising, not as promising with the CD64 intensity marker. With a uh, rock curve analysis that we can see that the area under the curve is very high, 0.964, shooting high, which, which, which is very promising. So as an early marker, in the uh, first two days of sepsis, it served to diagnose sepsis accurately, both sensitive and specific. When we come to answer the second question, what about its uh, comparison between it and the other conventional markers? We see that uh, CD64 had higher values in most of the values, especially in the area under the curve, in the rock curve analysis, as you can see, CD64 was the highest marker, followed by the CRT and uh, uh, CD64 intensity and other markers were way behind. Uh, when we come to calculate the Z4, Z4 uh, is a statistical analysis test uh, being higher as an early marker. We also see that it was highest with the sex CD64 percent and not the intensity in both the proven sepsis, uh, sepsis group and the suspected sepsis group. So it helps to differentiate also between the proven and the suspected group, giving us a very sharp demarcation. So we have answered our second question. The third question was, what panel to choose? 
So we did a multi-regression analysis using the C SPSS uh, version 22. We did uh, multiple combination to find which combination is the best. The first module, we included all our parameters and we only found that uh, the CD 64% and intensity were the significant parameters and the others had minimal contribution in the diagnosis of sepsis. So we did another multi-regression analysis, including only the CD64, a constant value, and the CRP. And I will tell you why the CRP, though the CRP here level is non-significant here, but I will tell you why we chose to incorporate CRP in our regression equation uh, to be used. I if we use this equation by the clinician, it is proven that uh, it improved the diagnosis of sepsis. Here, uh, when we have the CD64 alone, here when we have the CRP alone, and here when we have the combination, we find that CD64% is deficient in the negative predictive value. It's only 68%. When we add the CRP to it, it jumps up 10% more to become 78%. So the negative predictive value and the overall efficiency is improved from 87% to 93.4. So I think it's important to exclude that the, the patient, uh, the negative predictive value uh, increases by 10% is very uh, helpful by the CRP, which is a cheap and easy test to be done. So this is the rock curve analysis showing that uh, this is the combination giving us the highest area under the curve being 0.9988 about selecting the test. The both tests will be able to identify 988 of 1,000 patients of test. So now we answered the third question, which was the best combination to choose to clinical uh, diagnose. What about the final question, the, its role in prognosis? Uh, in our study, we had a death rate of 33%, and uh, we also, again, calculated the Z-score between outcome one, continued sepsis in the follow-up, and outcome two, which is the clinical improvement. And all the parameters um, were very low in uh, diagnosing uh, continued sepsis or the clinical improvement with uh, dropping down of the level of CD64 with clinical improvement, and CD64 was the highest in those tests. So uh, we still uh, had held a more comparative statistic that I will be telling you in the second presentation supposed to be given by my colleague, the comparison between CD64 and the other markers I mentioned earlier. So to conclude, CD64, it's in our hand to help our neonates uh, to tide up through the neonatal sepsis uh, stage and to uh, go uh, back to their families clear. CD64 is an early, specific, and sensitive marker of neonatal sepsis compared to the conventional marker. CD64 and CRP combination represents the best earlier marker of neonatal sepsis over the conventional methods used in our uh, NICUs. And the serial measurements of infection markers can help us predict the early uh, symptoms and signs and give the treatment appropriately, and also can predict the outcome uh, and the prognosis. CD64 can be easily performed in clinical laboratories once we have the machine of the flow cytometry, which is now available in most labs um, in diagnosis. In my last slide, I include this uh, photo of our uh, neonatal intensive care unit uh, to tell you that it is very crucial for us to uh, identify neonatal sepsis because not only we help in saving our neonatal life, not only we help uh, to save their families from the financial and emotional burden, but on the long run we will able be able to save our country from the um, burden emotionally and um, financially from supporting such families. Thank you so much for listening and um, any questions? Thank you. So we know that you can get full version of the CD64. Can you can you guys see that full version of the CD64 with the CRP alone? Actually, the technique using uh, the flow cytometry is very easy because it uses whole blood, very minute amount. It the turnaround time is about one hour, so it's very rapid. And the cost uh, in our country is about 60 Egyptian pounds, which is about six Egyptian uh, British uh, pounds. So it's very cheap. 
Um, ELISA techniques in Egypt are <laughs> even much more expensive when we compare it with other markets. So the problem is to have the flow cytometry machine in three different places. Did you have <laughs> any investment in this? We didn't try, actually. Well, mm -hmm. this is the test plan, uh, the test conditions in uh, the field. Egypt. Yes. And uh, the design and the treatment is typical for um, the Sinai River Valley. Yes. We tried this system and <laughs> so far yeah, it's... Uh, we didn't try other antibodies, like Sinai or Sinai River. Excuse me? We didn't try this other antibody. No. Sinai River Valley. No. Good. No. No. It's only a new technique. CDL14 and CD, uh, uh, CD14 we tried, we discussed it in the second presentation. It is fast in the molar size and the multiplication. So that's the difference between CD64 and CD15B, and that's why it's more promising and more specific. Can you say again what the Excuse me? Yes, 11. CD, CD11B. Mm -hmm. CD11 is a nucleophil marker as well. Okay. Wait for the second presentation, and I will give you a um, comparison between them. CD64 uh, is the FC receptor gamma one on yeah. neutrophil only. CD14 is the one expressed on monocyte and multiplication and on plasma. Yeah. So this study is 